Hello everybody, it's me again. I'm here to share with you my second out of body experience, like I promised. Um, if some of you haven't seen my first video, my first three, it actually, there was a bunch of things that kept going wrong, and so it came into three parts, and I know it's hard for people to stay focused when something happens like that, when something's too long, I know we lose focus pretty quickly, so I'll try to make this one short and sweet, and hopefully nothing goes wrong. But uh, yeah, so this is my second out-of-body experience, and I'll go step by step with exactly how I got to the point that I did that took me out, and um, maybe you can try it yourself and experience it yourself, and if you want something bad enough with your heart, and you put it out there, and you make the effort, then it's only a matter of time before it opens up for you as well. And as I always say, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. When you, when you follow that, and you truly live it and believe it, there's no such thing as coincidence. And the things that come to you, come to you when you're emotionally ready for it, and consciously ready for it, in the right place, in the right space. And um, when you do that, the doors of infinity open up for you. So... What really got me understanding spirit, I mean, I don't fully understand it, of course, because that's almost impossible, but I was shown another door, I was shown another gateway, and I had a completely different out-of-body experience than my first out-of-body experience, and it's that's how I knew that I wasn't in control, because I went through all the same things that I went through, all the same steps, I followed Everything to the T, exactly, I, I have it down to like a formula that can take me to that point every single time. But the second time I had the out-of-body experience, that's, I had a completely different out-of-body experience. But it was just as real as the first one. And so, yeah, I'll explain how I got there. So what you do is you start with letting go. And just consciously letting go of everything and every attachment that you have in your life. And the only way that you can let go of your vessel and your experience is by detaching from the experience and the vessel completely. So what I would do is I'd start with my toes. I'd start with the bottom of my feet. And I'd say, okay, feet, after a long day of work, you've been carrying me all day long. I thank you so much for everything that you've done. But now I I allow you to just relax. And as soon as I would say that, my feet would drop a whole nother level. And so I've, I've gone through all of these steps in my, in my previous video, so I'm sorry if you're listening to it again, but I'm just going to go step by step through all of it again. And so you can even get a better idea on how to do it. And I know that we're all completely different. So what might work for me might be something that doesn't work for you. And experience with yourself is the only way that you're able to truly discover what does work for you because there's a million ways to achieve those experiences and there's a million ways to achieve God and access God and it's what feels right within your heart and your mind is what helps you get there so yeah I go through that whole process on relaxing every part of my body and I start with my feet and I work my way up to my legs I work my way up to my thighs my my pelvis my stomach and as soon as I get to my stomach, I'd actually transfer over to my arms and be like, okay, hands, after carrying everything that you need to carry today, after holding everything that you need to hold today, I now allow you to just relax. And it's, you'll really, when you really consciously tell your hands and your body to relax, you truly feel it drop in a whole nother level. And you'll feel yourself kind of come out of, of that area. And so I work through that. And also at the same time, I'm do, doing my breathing exercises. And the breathing, I kind of change all the time. So sometimes I'll take a deep breath in through my nose and then exhale through my nose. And I'll do that, you know, five to 12 times. And then I'll take a big breath in and hold it. And when I hold it, I'll hold it and I'll charge it into my stomach. So when I take my breath in, I'll hold it into my core. And when I hold it into my core, you can literally feel the energy charging up inside of your stomach. And when you do that, it just kind of feels like, swirls of of air kind of just working through your body and just kind of opening things up and it's just like just swirling all around it's a really bizarre sensation but it's absolutely incredible and um and then i'd exhale through my mouth and when i'd exhale through my mouth i would connect the the top tip of my tongue to the roof of my mouth so i'd do a and as i'm exhaling I'd bring my stomach all the way into my spine, all the way back to my spine, and then just sit there and just feel myself without the oxygen. 
without anything. And not only would I not need to breathe, but I could just feel what it feels like to just be fully, completely present in the moment without anything that I have to do. Like no breathing, no anything, no thought, just feeling, just purely feeling the moment. And also with this one, uh, my eyes were closed. And when you close your eyes, again, you cross them and you look up and you'll feel pressure on the center of your forehead. And when you feel that pressure, it, it, it can get uncomfortable. And like the first time you try it, it, it can feel weird, like almost like it doesn't, like it's not right. But I know from my experiences that you have, you have to work through that pressure and that pressure, when you reach the point of, of complete relaxation and complete detachment of self, that pressure will crack open and that is what opens up the third eye and the third eye has been known for thousands of years and its symbolism is in everything all over our world you know that all-seeing eye that all-seeing eye is is actually the pineal gland and the pineal gland is our gateway to the spiritual realms into higher dimensions lower dimensions and you go to where you know where you vibrate with and so that's why i think that you should be at a, a very good place with yourself so you can access those higher planes and see the higher beings because the lower beings are not as friendly and comforting and warm as the higher vibrational beings. Anyways, so I'm doing the breathing and I also do the chant that I do every single time. And the chant goes, it's like, Nam That's when I feel my energy charging up. And so every time I do that, I feel my body lift up. Like literally, it feels like my whole body is vibrating. And so when you think of the universe in terms of frequency and vibration, which is everything, when you're able to create that vibration and that frequency in your throat, it actually it actually ripples all of your cells inside of your body, which kick them up, get them firing. Get, I don't know what's going on, but you feel them start to move. And when you do this, after you finish the complete exhalation of that chant, your body will just sink in so much deeper than it was before. And so also what you're doing is listening to the frequency that you hear inside of your ears. So you're doing the breathing. So, well, I do five to six chants and that's usually all I need in order to get me to that really, really relaxed state of mind. And after you do that, you're also looking up and viewing with your eyes closed, looking up through your pineal gland, and you're also listening. And when you're doing all those things, it you're not thinking because you're you're creating a machine effect inside of your body. And so you listen to that frequency inside of your ears. And since the first time I connected both the left and right hemisphere, when I listened to it again after I had had that first experience, I was able to hear that solid frequency again without hearing two separate frequencies on both sides. So since I connected them the first out of body experience, I was able to experience the already connected frequency when I try again in meditation. And so I'm listening to that frequency and you you have to really focus on that frequency and really listen to it. And the more that you listen to it, it the louder it becomes and it becomes louder and louder and louder and as your body's completely relaxing, you you cannot think if you think and you put your consciousness into thought, you've actually taken your consciousness and you put it over into over here or over here. And then you'll realize when you come back after you've gotten lost in some daydream of wonder or some thought about something that you have to do or take care of, you'll realize that your whole body is completely worked up and it, everything is completely tense again. You're like, oh my God, like how did I become so worked up again? And you have to like go through the whole entire relaxation process all over again, which can, it can take a while, but the more that you do it, the easier it becomes and you can relax your body really, really fast. You can relax your mind really, really fast. And um, so you work your way back and you're doing the breathing. And after you've done a lot of the deep breathing exercise of breathing into your nose, out through your nose, into your nose, out through your mouth, in through your mouth, out through your nose, and just kind of ch shifting all of them, you get to a point where your body kind of autopilot breathes. So you're just like this. And your mouth is open, your jaw is open, and it just comes naturally. You're not consciously breathing. It just, 
is in autopilot and so your body just starts breathing for you. And so you want to look and focus on that blackness that you're looking at with your eyes closed and feel that pressure and feel that pressure. And when you're looking, you want to listen to that frequency inside your mind. And when you're doing that, I also have a mantra and my mantra is just like go, just like go, just like go, just like go. And as I'm saying, just like go and just saying, just like go, you feel inside your body lighten. Like you feel your body start to lighten up. Like you're, you're starting to detach from all of the body parts that you have. And it's taking you to just that consciousness space, which is up in your mind. And um, as you're doing that, you also feel it with your heart. And the heart is what is going to take you to the place that you resonate with. So when your heart is in that right space, you start to feel your heart beat faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. But it's not like a bad fast. Like people say, oh, you shouldn't. That's because you're nervous or it creates all these things. All I know is that my heart beat faster and that's what felt was right with me. And so when it gets to that point, your heartbeat starts to create this exterior field that starts to spin around you. And what I learned after I had experienced that the first time the out of body experience, um, I realized that that was this thing called the Merkaba. And um, the Merkaba is your energy vessel and it is what turns your body into a machine and allows you to teleport from dimension to dimension. And, um, that's cute. That's really cute. <laughs> Anyways, so you feel that vibration. You feel, you're looking with your mind, you're listening with your ears, and you're feeling. And so I'm saying, just like, oh, just like, oh, just like, oh. And I'm hearing that ring getting louder and louder and louder and louder. And as it gets, it gets to the point where it gets so loud that it pretty much shatters your whole entire reality. And once it got to a specific point and my spin was happening so fast outside of me, my inside was just my heartbeat beating. And then all of a sudden, my body did exactly what happened the, the first time I had my antibody experience, where it just all of a sudden to lock in place like a, like a transformer. It was just like, ch -ch 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 -ch. it literally shifts. It's like my muscles are shifting into autopilot, like locked in place so I don't have to worry about them consciously. And they can just do their thing naturally without my presence being in the vessel. And so it's working through it, working through it, and I'm feeling it. And when this happens, it starts to get really overwhelming because it's a really, really, really powerful sensation. And in your mind, you kind of feel like you're going to die. It's like a, like a death simulation. And you're like, okay, just like go, just like go, just like go, just like go. And all of a sudden, it works all the way up. And all of a sudden, I, I hear the, and it's so loud that all of a sudden, I open my eyes. And I crack my eyes open. And when I'm in my room and I'm sitting on my bed and I open my eyes and I'm looking at my normal room and I'm looking at my normal bed and I like look down because something didn't feel right. And I look down and I see my blue body hovering above my, my vessel. And right when I saw that, I was like, and I felt it was like someone had taken my, my bed out from underneath me and it just, and I fell through my bed. And as I'm falling, I fell into the darkest blackness I've ever experienced in my entire life. It was the most terrifying emptiness that you can ever imagine. And it was just falling into this blackness and just falling and falling. And in my mind, I was just like, like, no, no, like trying to grab anything that I could, but knowing that there was nothing around me to grab. And I'm doing this 100% conscious. It was like, it was the same sensation that I went when I went skydiving. And I felt that knot in my stomach as I'm falling, free fall into the pit of blackness. And... I'm watching the light above me close and it's just closing and closing and closing and in my mind I'm just like go up 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 and I started like reaching for up and I just started reaching for anything and as soon as I started saying up and going up into the into the light my body goes whew, and I start flying up and I fly up and I fly up through that light and when I go through that light I'm going through my bedroom I'm going through my my house and as I'm flying up I'm in the clouds and I just remember being so terrified. The whole time I was like, I, like, I want to go back. 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 I want to go back because I thought that I was dead. I knew that place more than I've known any place I've ever been. And I knew that I probably should not have been there in that moment. And as I'm going up, I'm going up into the clouds and there's this cloud. And on that cloud was a group of beings. And all these beings that were sitting on this cloud, I knew every single one of them. I knew them more than I knew my mom or my dad or my brothers or anybody. I, I had seen all of these beings before. And as I'm going up, they're like, Travis, you did it. You did it. And they're like cheering me and telling me to just keep going on past them. And um, 
I remember looking at them and how I was looking at them. I remember being, having like the face of like crying and being like, oh my God, I'm not ready to be dead. Oh my God, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to be dead. Like, please let me go back to the, to Travis. Please let me go back to Travis. And I come flying up past them and all of a sudden I'm in space again and I'm looking and I just remember the sun being so incredibly bright. It was so bright that I will never forget that image of the sun and the planets. The planets, even though I knew that they were far, they were still crystal clear. All of them were clear. It was just like the universe was just a glowing. It was, everything was, I mean, the blackness of space, but then there was these glowing orbs of light that were the planets and they were the most vibrant things I'd ever seen in my entire life. And then in that moment, I felt something tug on the back of my head. And right when I felt that, I knew from how I'd read on out-of-body experiences in like previous research that when our soul leaves our body, it's connected by this, this cord. They say it's a silver cord, but it's like a bluish glowing cord and it connects to the back of your spirit body and it connects to the front of your human vessel. And right when I felt that tug, it was like, it was like a, like a Jeep crank. Like I was getting cranked back into my body. And right when I felt that crank, I was like, oh my God. It was like, I knew what that was. I knew that feeling and I knew that I was still connected to my body. And so in that moment, I was able to fully appreciate where I was and what I was and what I was doing. And I just started, I was just, I was getting pulled backwards, but I was like waving my body. Like I was like flying and swimming. It was like I was swimming through the blackness of space. And I knew that I was okay and I knew I was getting pulled back and I was like, oh, I'm not ready to leave. I'm not ready to leave. Like I didn't want to go because I wanted to see more. But as soon as I had been so much like, oh, I want to go back because since it was my first time experiencing it, I didn't, I thought that I was dead. And so it, I ended up tricking myself and thinking that I wasn't going to go back to the body. But as soon as I felt that tug and felt myself going back and knew that I was still attached to Travis, all of that worry and fear disappeared. And I knew that I was seeing something that I was supposed to see and I was being shown this experience. So I, I knew more about myself and about soul and about spirit and about God. I mean, you can call it God. You can call it the universe. You can call it Buddha. You can call it spirit. You can call it whatever you want. I choose to call it God because it, I don't know, it just resonates with me. And I like to call it the universe, but then that's like, oh, he's spiritual and God affiliates you with religion. And it's like, I'm not anything. I am just Travis. And I'm my connection with God and connection with spirit is in my consciousness and in my heart. And I feel it more than anything. And I'm getting pulled back and I'm getting pulled back to the, the planet. And I'm looking down and I can see the planet below me as I'm getting shifted and pulled down. And I'm just enjoying the ride the rest of the way. <laughs> And I come down, I see my house, and I float through my house, and I see my body, and I'm like, oh my god, there's my body. And I just go, Whoa. and as soon as I float back down into my body, again, it was the same sensation that happened the first out-of-body experience, where the noise was so loud, it was just like this, and then and I open my eyes, and I'm back in my body, and I'm back in my experience, and I'm looking down. And again, same as the first experience, my body starts going into like convulsions. Like my body was just like twitching everywhere. Every single ounce of my body was in a muscle spasm. Like my body was just in a full blown, full body muscle spasm. And I realized that, that that's what happens when your soul and energy of your vessel or spirit body is connecting with the vessel again. So everything is like going back in place. And so it's like twitching to like lock it back in gear and get out of autopilot. And... Again, I sit there and I lifted my hands up again. I'm like, oh my God. Like, oh my God, I'm back in Travis. I'm back in Travis. And I was so excited. And again, I just started bawling my eyes. I started crying so hard because I was so grateful to be back in the vessel. And there's so many people that are like, oh, I don't want to be here on this planet anymore. Oh, I don't want to be a part of this experience. Like, blah, I hate life. And it's like, we choose to come here. Like we are here for a reason and we want to be in this experience. And I realized from my two out of body experiences that how bad we actually do want to be here. Cause when I left, all I wanted to do was come back. And I was like, okay, I know what infinity feels like. There's nothing more than infinity. So I want to be in experience world, which is here where you live and you feel and you, 
go through emotions, like horrible emotions, incredible emotions, like we are supposed to feel all of them. And it's how we come out after we experience those things that make us and make our character because the past doesn't need to define us and our future doesn't need to define us. It's who we are in this present moment and how you treat others that makes the soul. And I know ever since then, I have known that this whole journey is to progress progress the consciousness of Travis and to be the best version of Travis. So who knows what happens in my next life? Because I do believe in reincarnation because I believe in the essence of Travis. And what if, I mean, obviously people know that we all create this reality together. We are all individual creators creating this reality together because your reality is nothing like my reality. The things that you've experienced, I've probably never experienced. And it's like, you can't say one way is wrong and that way is right and this way is wrong and this way is right because it all depends on the person because we are all experiencing our own world. Like what is real and true to me may not be real and true to you. And it's like, I don't need to force that on you. Like I don't need to force my truth and my belief. I'm just sharing with you what I experienced myself. And it's like, you don't have to take in what I say. You don't have to practice what I, what I was sharing. It's like, you live your life and as long as you're a good person and treating people with love and compassion, that is what's going to shift this planet into an existence that we've never known. And people dog on millennials all the time like we're entitled. But it's like, actually, we see the world differently. And we know that there's enough resources in this world to for abundance for everybody. And it'll be like, oh, it's capitalism. Oh, you got to work hard for what you want. It's like, yeah, you do have to work hard. I'm not dismissing that at all. I don't feel like the world owes me a damn thing because it doesn't owe anybody anything. You get what you put in. And... I just truly believe that with this shift happening, we, we just see the world differently and we're being shown these things and going through these experiences. And it's just how we make the world a better place for each other. And it's by sharing information and sharing everything, you know, and not being so greedy and being like, oh, this is mine. Like, oh, I'm going to put myself first. Oh, I need to look out for self. Like, oh, dog eat dog world. Like, how am I going to benefit myself and screw this guy over? You know, it's like, it doesn't work like that. The future world is not going to work like that. The future world works with cooperation with everybody. And I just know that my first out-of-body experience, I had no attachment to Travis. I was completely detached and I was everything in the universe. And I know that I was being shown that because it was showing me that everything is connected and part of this giant system, this machine of consciousness that works in perfect, perfect mathematical precision in everything that it does. And, um... My second one was the exact same type of experience, but I was shown, I was shown the essence of Travis and that my soul can live on through this next life. And who knows, what if it's what you believe that you create? Like if you believe that there's no afterlife and that there's only this one life, what if you do go into that deep blackness that I went into, that blackness of nothingness, because that exists too. But what if you believe in, in that your soul progresses on? Or what if you, what if what you create you believe in the outer realm too because that's what happens in this reality. When you put things out there and you and you work for it and you, you put intention and goal and speak it out, it comes to you. So what if you create your afterlife also? I'm just saying anything's possible. And so when you live in your heart and you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. And uh, yeah, that's my second out-of-body experience. And I just, I hope that this can influence you in a positive way. And, you know, be the best you that you could ever be. Because there's no right, there's no wrong. There's only experience and how you come out afterwards. I love you.